Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. I'm Mike and I will be your guide this evening. Uh, this evening's cocktail is a Godfather. That is a Scotch and Amaretto blend. Uh, normal recipe calls for two ounces of Scotch, one ounce of Amaretto. I think the Amaretto is a little too strong, personal taste. Um, so I might cut that back a little bit on my next one, next time I make one. Uh, and maybe a peatier scotch, but I don't know. It's it's good. It's good. The amaretto gives it a little bit of a sweet sweet tinge. But you're not here to talk about cocktails. I just forced that on you. You are here today to see the uh, painting scheme I have done on the orc cliff, orc board cliff. And uh, just before I uh, jump in, I just want to say welcome to all my new viewers and subscribers. Hopefully you become subscribers. Uh, it's very exciting for me when new people join my channel. So I just want to welcome you and uh, thank you for taking a look at what I have to offer here. It's something quite different today. Um, the stone texture that you're going to see on the cliff is produced from Bragdon Molds. This is a, a line of molds, um, and I'll put a link in the description to the site. It's 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 a terrible site. It's terrible, but the molds are really interesting, and I'm not going to talk any more about them uh, except to say that if you want to see more about them, this is the the back finger. You got to go back into the catalog, and in the review playlist, you will find a review I did of them. And in the ocean board project, you will find a video or two when I was working on the islands where I used them and I made some modifications. And that's a whole story. So if you're, especially if you're new to the channel, um, then go and check out those if you're interested in these uh, rock molds. Um, so having said that. What did I do with them? <laughs> um, when I was thinking about painting these, I wanted to do something different. I have painted a lot of rocks over the years, and I wanted to get more creative uh, with the style. And I looked at the texture, and I thought, it looks a little granite-like to me. Um, and so I wanted to go and find some color schemes for granite. And what I found was a very sort of slate gray uh, uh, granite that had some blue tinge to it. First of all, looking at photos of natural formations online from people who just shoot them is tough because people don't often have color corrected cameras. So the shifts, while you might not think that'd be a lot, it can be impactful. Add to that the fact that it's not always easy to tell what rock is actually being photographed. And I learned quite a bit in this research. Um, sometimes it's schist, sometimes it's gabbro, sometimes it's granite, sometimes it's something else. And that those can look kind of the same, could be slate, but that affects the kinds of colors that are available. So I ended up kind of thinking like, okay, I'm gonna pull all of these different kinds of colors together to guide me and um, and that's kind of how I went about this. Um, for the patrons that are out there, I showed them a, a little sneak peek of it, but I haven't uh, really given them a lot of details on this. So it's kind of exciting for me to kind of bring those people up to speed as well because they're, they're kind of special. So um, anyway, let's go over to the bench after that long intro, apologies, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's, I'm a little nervous about it. And um, we'll jump over to the bench and we'll come back after that. First thing to say is hold off your thoughts and comments on the color scheme. Uh, I know people jump right in and start writing stuff and um, give me a chance to explain what I did, how I did it, and what I want to change about it because it is um, quite a different color scheme for rocks uh, and it's not uh, exactly where I want it to be. However, I wanted to give you, uh, before we come up a little bit closer, I wanted to give you the full uh, view of the piece so you kind of see it in its entirety and get that uh, wide view of it. I was thinking of this kind of a rock formation as looking uh, fairly granite-like. 
that's not really accurate, I think. It could pass as granite, but in any case, I started looking for granite colors and I found some that were just these really dark slate blue kind of flecked uh, granite pieces and I thought, oh, perfect. Something really different to set it apart from the things that I normally do. So when I was thinking about a slate gray color, um, I was really thinking about uh, achieving a, a very uh, dark, dark gray, like charcoal blue. And a very good color to use for this is Payne's Gray. And I have some that are, um, I have some paints that are miscible, well wait, they're water soluble oils. They're not as soluble as you think. <laughs> So I painted this with my airbrush um, exclusively. And in order to spray the oil, right, obviously I had to mix it um, uh, down quite a bit. And what happened is the gray uh, flocculated, the gray pigments flocculated, which means they kind of clumped together and floated to the surface. So they would clog the uh, uh, airbrush. And so I had to strain them out, strain, 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 then strain it again, then let it sit, then strain it again. And what happened is it took all of the grays out uh, quite a bit. Now, a lot of the highlights actually were achieved by uh, wiping off the surface and then applying the paint again over the area. And so the thinner layers would show some of this uh, blue more prominently. And because of the uh, way that the paint had separated, it actually has a very, very low adhesion to the surface, which is good because I could wipe stuff off and, and modify it and bad because I wouldn't consider this a very durable surface. I will be um, doing another layer of sealing and, and I'll tell you about some modifications in a second. So. It will be more durable uh, than uh, when I was working on it. So after uh, painting it uh, for some, some layers, I then realized that I have a problem and it's in these deep recesses. Now when I uh, applied the tempera as the shading, which you saw in a previous video, when I had done the tempera in all of these deep recesses, there were spots that were missed because of the, the depth of some of these, these folds is there's a lot of very tight detail in there. And what happened is once I started painting this, I realized that any of those little specks hiding in any of these little cracks shows up like a light bulb uh, because everything around it is so dark. So I went back in and did some additional washes. I did some um, airbrushing. I actually was trying to airbrush into these cracks and then I gave up and I started doing washes again. Then I had to go in with a brush and stipple into some areas. So there's a lot of cleanup to hide all those little mistakes. This is a very difficult thing to try to shade uh, because I don't want harsh highlights because if you look at photos, it's not like there's a bright gleam striking off of these edges. Once I uh, finally, finally settled on um, the, the paint, I then went over and, and highlighted it all, a very light spray across the whole surface, and then um, an angled spray of a pearl paint. Uh, this is a craft paint I've had for ages, and I wanted something to give it a mineral look. And the pearl gave it a fantastic mineral speckling, I think. Um, it, you know, it wouldn't have been the same if I'd used a metallic paint. I mean, the pearl is in essence a metallic paint, but it's it has less of a uh, color tone to it. It's a little bit more of like a, like a, a white flaking rather than say like a silver or a copper or a bronze colored metallic paint. And I really liked the effect that it gave. Then I went back in and I cut in some white and some transparent base medium and I made a transparent white highlight. That worked awesome. 
So I was able to spray uh, down across the, the surface and really pick out the ridges and the highlights of some of these areas. And I saw them noticeably shifting uh, to a lighter color in a very subtle but very effective way. So I was really jazzed about how that came out. Now at this point, that was four in the morning and it was time to go to bed. And when I woke up, it looked like this. This is a bit different than what I saw in my, my groggy, bleary-eyed evening. Uh, and I think that really goes to show about the importance of stepping away from something and coming back and you see it with such a fresh eye. I was, con I was really concerned, actually, that it was too dark, that it was going to look too flat. And when I woke up, I was like, wow. This is really blue. So um, it, it's, it, it took me by surprise, actually. My plan is to go in and um, overspray the whole surface, you know, and the nice thing about an airbrush, go light, you can always add more, and um, overspray it with, um, you know, like a transparent, heavy charcoal gray. I mean, it's fantasy, right? You could have a mountain that looks like this, and I, I think it actually looks kind of cool, but this isn't what I wanted, and I really want to uh, get a grip on the natural colors that I envisioned. It's good for me, and I think it's going to be good for the project. Because I was nervous uh, while I was uh, painting it, and because I was concentrating so hard and trying to manage colors and, and all of that, I didn't shoot um, any sped up footage of me um, creating it and that's why uh, there are times where i can put the camera on in the background and just let it run and there are times where i can't even have that distraction uh on my mind because i have to put 150 percent into it uh, so um, so sometimes you'll get some footage of things being done sometimes you won't uh, but that's why when it doesn't happen i have enough knowledge of the materials available to me now to be able to make kind of informed decisions about what I want to use and how it's going to come out, except for the mixable oils, learning that part though, right? And that doesn't mean I know exactly what's going to happen. And so I want to use this example of what I've done to encourage you to be more experimental in your own uh, terrain work or diorama work. Um, don't be afraid to take risks. Uh, the only thing you risk is losing time. <laughs> because if I really didn't like that, I could wash it all down or I could just paint over it or, you know, whatever. It, it's not like anything's been ruined. It's about um, exploring that. And if I don't explore that, um, how do I know what the next awesome level could be? And so I want to encourage you to take that to heart and think about that when you're doing your own work. Uh, put something into it that you maybe think might not work and see if it does. And go to sleep, get up the next day, and look at it again. Super important. It's happened to me many, many times. I wake up and I come back and I'm like, wow, that looks totally different than what I thought it looked last night. Or I see new details I totally missed, something like that. And, um, and last thought is don't forget to use um, real life photos to help guide you. And actually, um, in my Patreon, if you become a patron, um, you will have access to my um, reference photo library, uh, which I have been uploading photos to for the, the higher tier uh, patrons. And that library has currently over 200 photos. And I'll be adding more. I add some every month. I it depends on what I'm doing. Maybe sometimes I just uploaded a whole load of cliff uh, photos for that library because, and in fact, then I found a whole bunch more. So I'm going to go in and, and make sure I get all of them up into that folder. Uh, so there's tons of examples of other kinds of cliffs, not just the ones I used for this model because I just go around and, and try to sample a whole bunch and then think which one works and how do I want to go about it. So anyway, that's available if you become a patron um, and your support is always super super helpful and appreciate it. I don't know. I really stretched here and I really think it's going to work out great when I'm done, but it has been a, an artistic stretch for me to go in this direction. So I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing that. If you want to see more artistic stretching, I'm trying to think if any of that's real, maybe, um, then hopefully you will come back and you will join me because you know that I will be back soon with another Terrence video.